Hi guys, I'm recording another video and I yes I am happy. I look like I'm about to cry, but I'm not. I didn't open this video with a hi it's awesome. That's just because I'm tired. Because I'm tired. And it's Sunday as I record this. And you know what? I'm sad that I gotta go back to work tomorrow because but I'm not sad about showing off some tarot decks. I'm not sad about that. Key things to note, there are people outside. They're very loud. I'm hopeful that you can't hear them all that much. And I'm hopeful that they won't be too loud when I have awkward bouts of silence because that's what I do sometimes. But we also have the editing process, so maybe I won't be. I promise you I am not going to cry, but right now with the Okay, so I still have a janky lighting system going on. I need to figure out a better way to provide light onto myself because it's either I get like a shadow on my face from light being up here or right now I've got like, I have got like a desk lamp that is sitting in my lap and facing up to me to give me some form of light but it's making redness appear on my face which makes it look like <laughs> And I promise you I'm not like that. I just make goofy crying faces. Anyway, we are gonna look at today the Game of Thrones tarot. Y'all remember when this came out? Y'all remember when this came out? I feel like everyone was talking about this deck for a while, but maybe it was just because everyone was talking about Game of Thrones. Because we were all talking about Game of Thrones. Don't tell me what happened in the last season. I haven't gotten to watch it yet. I know it's been a year and I can't get mad about spoilers, but at this point everything's been spoiled for me already, but still, like, don't tell me stuff. I know someone dies and I know someone kills someone else and go fuck yourself. <laughs> anyway, so I like this, I like, first of all, let me show you this box. Now, I'm usually a big fan of smaller boxes that give you, like, a carry, like, a small box for a deck that allows you to carry the box with you. So that way, you know, you, you can just be compact. Like, you grab the deck that's in the box, throw it in your bag. When you got big old boxes like this, can't throw this in your bag to bring with you now, can you? But usually, big boxes mean big guidebook. Doesn't really have a big guidebook, but what I do like about this, it opens up like a treasure box. Ooh, oh. Keynote, in case I do decide to do a giveaway, there is a little crack here and a crack here on the case. It came like that when I got it. It had the little, those two cracks in it and I, you know, I got it for a decent price shortly after it came out so I was not gonna complain about it but it is cracked on the one side so a little sad because it does ruin some of the, some of the display of the box. Like I know the, the, the important thing is the cards itself but the display in this was done, ow, the display in this was done really well, so it takes some of that away. But, ta-da, it comes with a little book. I like, it kind of resembles more of a little black book as opposed to like a full-out tarot guide, because it's not super big. There's a little pull tab here so you can pull the book out. Not a super big book, but I like this because this does feel like something that like, you would see in Game of Thrones, just like, the, I mean, the, the design of the guidebook itself and the setup of it, I think that really works for this deck. They really made it something different and unique for the show itself. I haven't read too much of the guidebook, but they do show key meaning, so like keywords, things like that. They show upright meaning, reversed meaning. They also show you they show you the card itself, like a small representation of the card itself and talk a little bit about how this character fits into the theme of this card. So it helps tie it back to the show itself because this is based on the show, it's not based on the books. I am going to tell you about this cardstock because it is weird. It's not bad, it's just weird, it's just weird. Like. I actually don't even know if I can describe it. There's like a texture to it. It almost feels like, feels more like plastic than actual paper. Cause it's like, has a bit of bend to it, but it doesn't, it's, it's like, it's just cause it's flexible. It doesn't feel like it's gonna rip or break. It feels sturdy in that sense. It, can you hear that? Can you hear that? Like, it also has like, 
literally ridges on it. Like, I don't know what type of cardstock this is, but it feels more like plastic than it does card. It's weird, but I think that probably helps make it a little bit sturdier. It might also be something where it's less likely to get damaged if it was wet. Don't quote me on that. Don't, don't like, you know, get this deck and then say like, oh, I'm gonna pour a whole jug of water on it. Like, I don't know. I'm saying the texture of it sort of feels like that. So this deck does go through your standard Rider Waite Smith setup, starting with the Fool, going to the World in the Major Arcana, and then going through each of your suits, the Pip cards, Kings, Queens, Knights, Pages, all that shiz. Let's go through some of them. Let's go through some of them. There's, I know, oh man, when this came out, so many people were having such different beef with like the different ways these things were, with, with different characters that were chosen here. So just because I feel like in all of these videos I've showed off the Fool, like let's, let's keep a tradition going. The Fool is Tyrion. There's a dragon behind him, that's pretty cool. One that I know a lot of people had issue with was the Red Witch or the Red Woman as the Priestess, which I get because she is a priestess. So I get it in that aspect, it's kind of literal, but I think a lot of people had issue with it because, A, because probably a lot of people thought of her as somewhat a villain, like giving out this information, like uh, like telling, oh God, I don't even want to do spoilers. And it's something that happened in like a season earlier than the last season, but like there was definitely a scene where they had, she, at her request, someone was burned alive. And, you know, because she, she answers to the Lord of Light, and I think a lot of people have issue with it because the high priestess is supposed to be someone of great intuition and vision and insight and where whereas she it doesn't doesn't always seem like that from the show itself. I guess it sort of depends on how you look at her. I don't know. I do love Daenerys as the Empress. That that just feels so empowering for her as a character because she's grown so much since season one. I like that choice. You've got Jon Snow as the Emperor. Again, I think that also works. He's done a lot of growing since season one as well. I, I like Varys, so I, I like that he's the Hierophant. I think, I think it kind of works. You've got Jon Snow and Egret as the lovers. I think, again, that works and that was, you know, that was, that was a pretty tragic tale between the two of them. Oh yes, I love Brienne of Tarth as strength because she was a woman who stood her ground and lived her life the way she felt she needed to. Being a knight in service to, you know, the, the king that she loved. I mean, it started off as that, but she kept being a knight despite the fact that she was a woman and I, I think that that takes a lot of strength. Bran as the hermit, yeah, that, that definitely works for me. Oh, Ned Stark sitting in the the Iron Throne as Justice. That's just that is a potent image right there. If you know the show, you know why that's such a potent image of seeing Ned Stark as Justice sitting in that throne. Arya as Death. I, I also kind of feel like it works because Death is also about change and she also had the scenes of what do we say to the, to the god of death, not today. It works for her for that, but it also works for her because she became someone who had to change herself so much throughout her, her life. Throughout her life, Arya went through like such big change throughout the entire show. Ramsay Bolton as the devil. I mean, if you think about it in terms of the devil as being pure, complete evil, then yeah, it works. If you think of the devil as being like an... an a figure who is meant to challenge you, to see how much you can stand and endure and ultimately realize that you wear your own chains and you can also take those chains off when you feel like it. I don't know that it works for that, but the tower, the tower just, yeah. I, ca I do kind of like the moon being the moon gate. It's an interesting choice for that. I'll say that, how about that? It's an interesting choice. I like that the world just shows like the, the actual map of Westeros. The first suit that appears here is coins. So it is coins instead of pentacles, but that's usually an interchangeable thing. A lot of times you see coins as opposed to pentacles. It still works. I will hold up, I'll take a picture and show like all 10 of these cards at once 
in a, in a picture. So a little bit easier to for you to look at. You can pause the video if, if you want to look at certain ones. But yeah, there's some interesting interesting images here. Not all necessarily based around characters in the show or even scenes in the show. I do like the, the image of Arya sitting blind outside the church asking for money or food in the five of coins. I think that works really well. Varus giving money. I believe that's, I believe that's a scene where, where Tyrion is trying to give a woman money in order to, you know, so she can feed her baby and he, the, and Varus comes up to him and says, she thinks you're trying to pay her for her child so you can eat the child. I, I imagine it's that scene just because, you know, why not? So yeah, there's, there's a few here that seem to indicate actual scenes from the show, actual characters from the show, but other times they don't. Like you can, you can infer that maybe eight of coins is Gendry working at his forge nine of coins is obviously Daenerys which I love because I, I've been saying it in so many of these videos I love my girl in the nine of pentacles just standing there owning her space looking at what she's achieved at what she's accomplished and Daenerys accomplished accomplished so much in that show she grew so much she became so much I think it works so the court system is page knight queen and king you have Tyrion as the page of coins kind of see it but I don't know I feel like Tyrion would have been more than a page because again he also grew so much strength wise and character wise throughout the eight years of this show. Knight of Coins Brienne yeah I can kind of see it I can kind of see it. I like Olena Tarell, Tarell I believe it's Olena I mean my brain my brain I I like it but well, after it came out that Ole, Olena the, the, whatever the, the, the grandmother of flowers. I don't know. I can't remember names. Ah, oh, there's so many names in this show. But when it came out that she, she did that to, uh, to, what's his nuts? Joffrey? I don't know. I kind of think she would be a good, like, swords person because clearly the entire time she knew stuff that was going on. She, she was watching, she was seeing, she was paying attention. And then she would put plans into action. And... I don't know, I just see her as a planner, as sort of like a ski, not like a, I sort of see her as a planner and as a schemer and someone who comes up with the ideas and then, yeah, she might act on them, but that, that to me is a queen who's thinking and paying attention. So that's why I think, I don't know, I feel like she could have also been like the queen of swords. I think that could have worked too. But then again, queen of swords, a lot of times we perceive that to be a woman who is not as emotional not as a tied to things emotionally very not always cold and distant but has this air of cold and having having a separation between people because she's she's unemotional in a sense so maybe that doesn't actually work for her but just the idea of planning and thinking and scheming i think works ace of swords it's it's john snow's sword so works you do have aria in the two of swords Three of Swords is very much the same image that you'd see in a Rider Waite Smith deck. The heart with three swords through it. Four of Swords, I believe that is, is that Beric Dondarrion? Is that the name? Uh, being risen again while also still resting. So the imagery still works, but it is also a scene. It's meant to be a scene from the show itself. Same with Five of Swords. Yeah, so Swords seems like it's matching up with actual figures from the show. I don't think Eight of Swords was something that actually happened, but it does work because, you know, you have a character in there feeling trapped. So it works. It works. Ten of Swords is a big one. Whoo, boy, that's, that's an image. That is an image. All the swords stabbed into the ground where Jon Snow is buried and just the sign that says traitor. Whoo-wee. Whoo-wee. Anyway, Ramsay Bolton as the Knight of Swords. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I can see Cersei as more of that cold, cruel, calculating form of the Queen of Swords. So that works. We're going on to Spears because instead of wands, it's Spears in this deck. So again, I'll take a picture of all 10 cards so you can see them like all displayed out in full. Daenerys is in the two. You have Littlefinger in the three. And again, some of these might not portray actual people or figures or real, real scenes from the show. 
but it's still characters and scenes you might recognize. I like Daenerys as the Queen of Spears. I think that works. I don't know that I would class Ned Stark as a King of Spears, but I can kind of see it. I think Daenerys works for Queen of Spears because she just, she was just always a figure that, you know, she kept a fire within her, literally because of being the mother of dragons and things like that, but also just because she, she didn't let her situation keep her down. She found ways to overcome and work through and follow her own fire even when the world around her was telling her, no, you can't do that. I liked her as a character. I know what happens to her in season eight. Y'all don't have to tell me it got spoiled. I can't be angry because it's been out for over a year at this point. Let's move on to cups. Again, some of these aren't really specific, like Ace of Cups. I don't know that I've seen a cup like that in the show unless uh, unless there was and I don't remember. You know what it should have been? It should have been that coffee cup that they, that they caught on set or in one of the, the episodes. They forgot to remove the coffee cup, the Starbucks cup. That would have been good. Three of Cups, it's just three toasting glasses. I don't think that's anyone in particular. I mean, the Five of Cups is meant to signify exactly what you would see in a standard Rider Waite Smith deck. You know, the same, focusing on the three cups that have spilled and not the ones that you have. So it's it's still mirroring some of the classic imagery from Rider Waite Smith, while others do not, but still hit those themes. So it all kind of works. I think it definitely works as as a deck for reading with. And if you are attached to the Game of Thrones show, the series, the books, this would definitely be a great card or a great deck to read with. I love that you've got of the king, queen, knight, and page of cups. Four of them are Starks. I mean, you can argue, I know, I know technically Jon Snow, not a Stark, but raised by Ned Stark. So he's kind of a Stark. He, he embodies the same sort of things that you would see Sansa and Bran, who are also in here. I just think, I think it works. It works because they are their father's children raised in that way. It, it's just, I don't know, it's cool seeing that the, the whole family made the cut there. That is a very quick run through of the Game of Thrones tarot. If anyone is interested in me doing a giveaway or whatever, let me know. I will see about that. I, I shouldn't even get close to this. Look at that. What is this? Why with this light? I don't get it. I don't get it, guys. That's a little bit better. Great, great, now that the video is over. Let's just, let's just, let's just cut this video before it gets any worse. Anyway, I'm Anya, I'm leaving. Thank you all, I love you all, I'm not mad, I'm just tired and I'm frustrated at, at, at how janky my system and setup is. I just want it to go, go, go well. But we're working on it, we're working on it. Things will get better. Thanks guys, bye.